program with worthy Professor Abul Fazal Ali Khan. He will just express his views regarding the role of bariatric surgery in Pakistan and what are the pros and cons and how we progressed. Welcome, Professor Abul Fazal Ali Khan. Sir, it's a pleasure mm -hmm. that you have joined our conference and viewers, they will uh, get a lot of benefit from your speech. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maz. I want to congratulate you on your uh, promotion as Professor of Surgery and uh, holding these uh, conferences very regularly. Shalimar uh, Medical College has emerged as a major uh, center for uh, the bariatric surgery. And uh, uh, today's um, uh, virtual meeting will uh, definitely be very helpful for those who are practicing uh, or aspiring to practice uh, bariatric surgery. So I would like to share some of my thoughts with you and I'll share my screen. And okay. So all of uh, you know that uh, there's a very important role of uh, surgery in the management of uh, obesity. Uh, and uh, when it is combined with uh, diabetes, it's known as diabet diabetes and, and also known as metabolic surgery because it corrects many of the metabolic uh, problems which are associated with obesity. And at times, uh, obesity may not be associated and it uh, is only metabolic problems for which we do this kind of surgery. Uh, Over the last two decades, bariatric surgical operations have rapidly increased in number as this is the only durable way of uh, reducing the weight and maintaining the weight reduction. And this is partly because of uh, the laparoscopic surgical techniques have progressed and more and more uh, laparoscopic surgeons are available to do these kind of surgeries. Previously, <clears throat> open bariatric surgery was associated with lots of uh, abdominal wall problems and uh, other complications associated with major excess uh, surgery. But uh, laparoscopic surgery has reduced the, the magnitude of the trauma and therefore the uh, complications and side effects of uh, bariatric surgery has declined steadily over the period of time. And it's not only the development in new techniques of uh, surgery, but uh, also endoscopy is making strides into taking its share in the management of bariatric uh, problem. And now endocrinological uh, interventions like hormonal medicines are becoming more available as we understand the mechanism uh, of obesity and metabolic uh, surgery, uh, metabolic uh, issues. Metabolic improvements that were gained made addition to be designated as obesity and metabolic surgery. And that makes clear that these operations are for the treatment of obesity disease and also its related metabolic complications such as type two diabetes, uh, which we know carries a lot of uh, long-term morbidity and complications, hypertension, uh, which leads to a number of uh, cardiovascular complications and obstructive sleep apnea leads to almost a change of personality and a deteriorates quality of life. Uh, this is a very uh, well uh, known and shared uh, cartoon of, uh, of the weight gain and uh, its effect and the causes. So the weight gain may be because of uh, improper diet or uh, reduced uh, exercise and then there are hormonal changes which adjust to promotion of weight retention. And this is associated with increased appetite or slowing of metabolism. And this is a vicious circle. The weight uh, keeps, keeps on gaining. And one way of breaking this vicious cycle is bariatric and metabolic surgery. And this is aimed at uh, uh, influencing the hormone levels which adjust 
and support the weight loss. And then with the help of these interventions, the patient is uh, out of this vicious circle and can reduce the weight and then maintain it uh, for a considerable period of time. Now, bariatric and metabolic surgery is not static. It is evolving over the period of time um, because there are many inherent uh, problems associated with uh, this complex problem. Remission of type 2 diabetes following surgery is more likely in patients who are not insulin dependent prior to surgery. And therefore, we must educate uh, the general public, the family physicians, and also um, other uh, treating doctors to refer type 2 diabetes patients who may benefit from metabolic surgery. Uh, as uh, all of us know that uh, there is no medical treatment of type 2 diabetes and uh, surgery can be curative in such patient or it can delay uh, the complications for a significant period of time. Bariatric and metabolic surgery offers a significant protective effect against coronary artery disease, and it's known to prolong life in selected patients. Associated interventions in both diabetic and non-diabetic patients, as well as heart failure. So it not only improves the quality of life, it also leads to longevity of uh, uh, these uh, selected patients. Now, sleeve gastrectomy, ruin via gastric bypass, uh, and now, uh, uh, these uh, one anastomosis, uh, uh, mini gastric bypass, and uh, sadi, uh, these are the procedures which uh, produce a similar weight loss pattern at five years. While duodenal switch, uh, which is uh, now um, related and improved uh, version of these are available, are associated with maximal weight loss overall an optimal resolution of obesity-related comorbidities. But this comes with a price. There are a number of uh, side effects and complications, and we, we must counsel the patient uh, about these uh, side effects and complications and adjustment in their lifestyle, which are necessary to get the maximum benefit from this uh, kind of surgery. Now, another topic which is uh, gaining traction is weight regain and insufficient weight loss after bariatric and metabolic surgery. And this is defined differently. And uh, the, commonly, weight regain is uh, defined when we uh, fail to lose more than 50% of extra, excess weight uh, or when there is regain of 10 to 20 percent of uh, uh, weight after initial weight loss. Weight regain is associated with deterioration of quality of life and the reappearance or worsening of obesity associated comorbidities, for example, hypertension and type 2 diabetes. And this necessitates close monitoring and appropriate management. And some of these patients, they may need revisional surgery to manage weight regain and insufficient weight loss. So while initially there's weight loss in all types of uh, bariatric surgery, uh, and unless we select the patient properly, unless uh, we do the operation correctly, uh, then unfortunately weight regain or insufficient weight loss uh, is becoming a major problem. And uh, this may need revisional surgery, which is associated with high morbidity and, uh, and uh, it requires uh, more expertise. Some patients experience weight regain or insufficient weight loss after bariatric surgery, and we need to address the definitions, the prevalence, the mechanism leading to weight uh, regain, clinical significance, preoperative predictors, preventive and treatment approaches, including uh, behavioral changes, pharmacological and surgical management strategies of weight regain and insufficient weight loss, mechanisms and preoperative predictors, 
contributing to weight regain are complex and multifactorial, but still we need to understand and spend some time with the patient to explain these uh, possible problems. A large Swedish study has found that 10 years after laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy, there was 27.8% weight regain. And uh, weight regain is also associated with Rue and Y gastric bypass, although uh, it is uh, significantly much less. But now, as sleeve gastrectomy is uh, becoming more uh, commonly done procedure, uh, we must understand that it is associated with a significant weight regain. There are several mechanisms which contribute to weight regain following bariatric surgery. And these include hormonal mechanisms, nutritional non-adherence, physical inactivity, mental health causes, maladaptive eating, Surgical mechanisms are also implicated in weight regain. Uh, that is enlargement of gastric pouch, stoma dilatation, or gastrogastric fistula. And therefore, we must uh, do the best kind of surgery and we must uh, uh, always uh, share the tips and tricks to prevent uh, these uh, surgical errors leading to the weight regain. The mechanism of surgical failure leading to uh, weight regain was studied uh, in more detail in a large review. And uh, after laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, dilatation of gastric pouch uh, was found in a correlation with post-operative BMI, where dilatation leads to loss of restriction resulting in reduced satiety, increased food intake, and subsequent weight regain. So this is quite logical that if there is dilatation of the gastric pouch, uh, then uh, it will lead to um, less restriction, leading to increased weight gain. The research has shown that the mean gastric volume in patients with weight regain increased from 120 ml early post-operative surgery to a about four times, uh, 524 ml at five years. So this we must keep in our mind and we must educate the patient that patient who has lost the weight should uh, keep on uh, monitoring what he eats and uh, the amount of the food that he takes. Among Ruin Viagastric Bypass patients who underwent upper GI endoscopy at workshop for weight regain, uh, researchers identified dilatation of gastrogenostomy pouch in uh, uh, dilatation of gastrogenostomy in about 60% of patients, and large gastric pouch in about 30% of patients, and both of these abnormalities in 12.3% of the patients. Stoma diameter more than 2 cm also independently is associated with rate regain. Gastro gastric fistula also diminishes the restrictive and malabsorptive component of Rue and Y gastric bypass surgery, leading to weight regain. Therefore, the way, way forward in the management of these problems is better appreciation of sequence and extent of clinical impacts of weight regain and insufficient weight loss determining the ideal timing and suitable intervention and strategies. Informed knowledge of preoperative predictors of weight loss and uh, insufficient weight loss could aid to identify patients who are potentially at risk for both these conditions in order to offer them the necessary resources and counseling. A better understanding of the effectiveness and safety of the dietary, behavioral, pharmacological, and surgical prevention and management strategies will assist in the selection of interventions to mitigate weight regain and insufficient weight loss. Now, I want to move to another topic, and which is uh, uh, the uh, bariatric surgery or metabolic surgery in this COVID era. Uh, as you know, that um, the public hospitals and major teaching hospitals are uh, inundated with the uh, COVID-19 patients, especially now we are entering into the fifth wave. 
and we do not know when this pandemic is going to end. Most probably, it's going to take a while. Uh, and we must uh, actually discuss uh, whether we should be doing less of pediatric surgery and or we should be doing pediatric and metabolic surgery as a priority in high risk patients because people with the obesity have been among those most disproportionately impacted by a COVID-19 pandemic, highlighting the urgent need for increased provision of pediatric and metabolic surgery. So I would like um, uh, the panelists to deliberate on this topic. Uh, what priority should we attach to bariatric uh, and metabolic surgery in face of uh, uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic and in face of the fact that many cancer patients uh, and other elective surgeries have been delayed because of uh, the increased uh, load in the major teaching hospitals. Now, it is hoped that increased provision of uh, bariatric surgery uh, would reduce the COVID-19 related morbidity and mortality as well as obesity-related comorbidities, ultimately reducing the clinical and economic burden of uh, obesity. So just to conclude uh, my uh, presentation, bariatric surgery remains effective and durable for treating obesity and reducing or resolving the obesity-related comorbidities. It is an established fact. Understanding and tackling the weight regain and insufficient weight loss after bariatric surgery will require multi-pronged approaches, enhanced uh, knowledge of hormonal, psychological, behavioral, and surgical mechanisms contribute to an understanding of weight regain and insufficient weight loss, improving the ultimate outcome. And finally, we need to reevaluate priority of uh, metabolic surgery in the COVID area. So I thank uh, the organizers and the audience for patient listening. And uh, now, if um, you want to ask any questions, you are most welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, you have really elaborated uh, all pros and cons, and we need definitely proper history, proper evaluation, proper procedure, and proper selection of the patient. And uh, you have really discussed about this COVID uh, this pandemic and cases are regrowing nowadays. So we have to evaluate and we have to set our priorities. What sort of patient we are going to operate and uh, though we have got that available in some paper uh, in few months, um, which have inflicted that we uh, can proceed with bariatric surgery because of these comorbidities of obesity and uh, this chest complications are going to decrease once patient is going to reduce their weight. But we have to make uh, some guidelines according to our own circumstances. And we'll have uh, this question-answer session uh, in the end when we'll have this panel discussion.